as well, before we get going, I want to um, make a recommendation for anybody who doesn't really use Blender a lot, unlike me. Um, I want to point out the quick quick favorites menu that's available with the Q key. A lot of people ask me like, what's going on with this. It's basically just, um, it's a shortcut key that you can assign your most used tools and functions to. So when we're building modular assets, you're going to find that you're using, you're relying heavily on the grid and you're relying heavily on the origin point of the object you're making. So I'm going to quickly just create a, a, a cube here and show. So we will be switching in and out a lot using autographic views like uh, going top view with the Z click here. And we could go into side views as well. So we're going to be relying heavily on this grid in the back. Everything has to snap seamlessly when you're dealing with modular, modular assets. So th um, this is going to be something that we're going to be moving our pivot point around quite a lot. So there's three things that I'd recommend setting up if you're new to doing modular stuff using your quick uh, your quick favorites. And the first one is going to be how do you say it? Uh, every time you move an object around, you're changing its position, rotation, and scale basically because we're going to be doing an awful lot of, of of this stuff and over time you're going to need it to be set in a place where you're able to um get if i go to view um where is it yeah you're going to need this location information rotation and scale but if you're kind of if you have your object moved around and scaled and it, it, it's transformed quite a lot you're not going to be able to, like this information here won't be reliable to you anymore. So what we need to do is we need to reset um, those the scale scale rotation and location of this object. And if you were doing this manually, what you'd need to do is come to object in the menu here, and you want to go to apply and all transforms. And you'll see there that's after swapping my um, origin point back to the world center. So now this kind of funny looking. Um, rotation that's on it now that's basically its default so the first thing I want to add to my queue menu which is my quick favorites is that all transforms so I'm going to right click on this add the quick favorites there we go um, so Q, and then every time I want to maneuver this around you see here's my origin point press Q and all transforms and now it's reset it. so we're going to be doing that quite a lot with the objects because as this moves around, I'm going to be relying on this information. And if transforms are stored in this object aren't set to center, we're not going to get um, everything to line up properly. So there's going to be other situations where we need to use our 3D cursor here as a temporary um, way to hold the location of an object while we reset our transforms. And then we want to put um, our transform back to the object so we're going to need to set up um, a shortcut as well to to deal with that but i'll um i'll set that up while there's an example to show you it can be a little confusing to explain that piece so i'm just going to get straight into doing um some modular design here the first thing that we want to make modular obviously is start simple so we're going to make a simple wall and then i'll move on to make a window and then from a window there'll be a doorway and then it's really going to be about how we make them all fit together and how we all snap them together. It can be kind of confusing at first, especially for people who aren't aware of how to use the grid and use this little fella here, which is the snapping tool, the little magnet. And um, this increment snapping is probably the most important part of, of this process. Without this, we do a lot, of, we'd be doing so much fixing. Um, vertices and stuff and it, it really becomes unfun so just kind of get the hang of turning this on and off you could uh, assign that to a uh, quick favorites as well if needed um i i don't find that much of a hassle to come up here and just highlight that also the shortcut i think for that would be is it shift tab yeah shift tab will turn that off also my screen key or my screencast keys are here i'm going to press shift a and make a uh, I'll start with a cube, why not? Now here's going to be the first case of our increment snapping that we're going to use. 
we created this cube, but it created the origin point in the center. I'm going to be relying on raising this cube up along increments. So I'm going to turn on increment snapping here. So with that turned on, I come to my move tool and I pull up on the the Z axis, it'll snap. So now the bottom of it here is resting on that grid because it snapped one increment up. And if I go into, if I click on this little X here to go into my side view, you can see it's going to snap along the kind of like boulder and um, whiter lines there, you see them? That's going to be where the increment snap or snaps. You can see here now, this is actually a good example. If I'm zoomed out and I try to move this up along the Z, it'll snap with whole increments. Like that. But if I zoom in closer to the object, a second grid will appear. Much finer lines. And once I can see that, if I start moving this again, it'll use those finer lines as the increment as well. So I'm coming up much slower now. And that can be pretty useful if you want to give something, like at the moment, this is probably two meters high. If you want to make it 2.5, you'd use those smaller, uh, smaller lines to snap to. So keep that in mind. When you're zoomed out, you're going to do full increment snaps. And when you're zoomed in, you're going to be snapping to the smaller, the smaller grid. All right, so I have moved this up. It snapped to the, the floor plane there now. So I want to move this um, origin point to the bottom because I want the bottom plane here to be the base of the object. This is going to be the bottom of the wall. So like I have my shortcut saved here, I'm going to press Q and all transforms. And again, for anyone who missed that, to get all transforms reset, you want to go to object, apply all transforms or right click it and I have it added so you want to add to your quick favorites. So whenever you press Q, it's right there. So now with the, the bottom of this cube here being the origin point, I can see in my transform controls here, which is the item tab, like this shows me the values of uh, the X, Y, and Z plane. If I come into edit mode by pressing tab and select the top plane, you can see that this is two meters in the air. This is scaled two meters high. I want to double that. And um, at the moment, I'm not that worried about scale as far as human scale goes, because I plan on um, assembling, making the modules, assembling them all. And then once I kind of have a modular piece, like a, a building that I'm happy with, I'll bring in a scale model then, and I will scale the entire unit as one um, before I bring it out into my game engine or whatever I plan on doing with it. So I I'm going to want these walls, uh, maybe I'll go four meters high with this. And again, because I got increment snapping turned on, when I drag this up, I'll zoom out. So I want full increment snaps. It'll go, uh, it didn't go quite far enough, but still got the result. So now this is a four meter, four meter tall wall. Big wall, but you know, bigger's better, I guess. Now, because I'm making this with a bit of thickness, I'm going to consider that to be one side of the wall, that to be the other, and this is going to be the filler. So I don't need this much filler. I'm going to come into my top down view by clicking on the blue Z here. Right, so I'm going to bring this back again, relying on that um, almost transparent grid there. Gonna bring this back. Maybe yeah. I might give it uh, two spaces either side. Yeah, that's gonna be two spaces either side of the wall, so this is an awful habit of throwing me around. Okay, so that's gonna be our wall thickness. I'm upside down now. Um that's gonna be the wall thickness. So this here is gonna be a plane segment, okay? So I suppose you could call that done. Like you're not really gonna you're you're gonna be making these with windows and they're gonna be decorated and stuff, but you're always gonna use one of these. Many of them actually. So for the moment I'm just gonna come out of edit mode. So I'm back in object mode here and I'm already reset here, but just to get like make it a a good habit of it, just resetting 
your transforms, even if you think they're already done, just do it again, just to be sure, so that you're not gonna have any problems further down the line. So that's one piece. So I'm just gonna bring this over to the side. But first I'm going to duplicate it. So I pressed Shift D to duplicate it. I'm just gonna bring that back to the world center. Now I wanna modify this. So this is gonna be, I can probably turn this into a corner unit or maybe I can uh, make a double Two of these wide, because you're gonna some room. Some rooms are gonna want wider walls, where you might want like a a large window in it, or maybe you're you're gonna put a doorway in this. Now a doorway can fit into this if you consider it. Human scale might be might be this as far as the thickness of the the wall goes. So we could probably just even. Put a door into this object here. Which I suppose we'll do. Well, no, we need a door anyway, so I'll get to a window in a second. I'll make a door out of this segment. So for that, I will go back into edit mode. And I'm going to press Ctrl R. And that gives me a slice, um, insert edge loop, basically. And it will snap to the center, the dead center of this open polygon here. So it'll divide it in two basically, and you can see that it's looping around the entire object. If I click that, I can then modify this, and you can see it again the way it's snapping to the grid. I can modify this, um, whichever way I want. So I'm going to make this probably, taking about the height of a door here, so I'll probably go this height. Okay, and now because I want this door to be centered perfectly within this object here so i could um try to eyeball this and say put a cut here again control or and put a cut over here but there's no guarantee that they're going to be the same you can see there's a significantly less wall this side than there is this side so what i'll do is i'll rely on the fact that you putting in an edge loop will always put me in the center so I'll control or put a loop down the center and what that will let me do then is I can come into polygon mode here and just select these polys and I can just be rid of them this X and delete faces and now this will let me set up a modifier on this throw a, a mirror onto this so anything that I do on this side would be perfectly mirrored on the other which will give us the perfect center door then so I'll click on the little spanner here, go to mirror and set up a mirror on the X for me. Now when I come back into edit mode, you can see only this side has geometry because that's basically an illusion. That's not there yet. It's only when we apply this modifier, the geometry will be mirrored over. So I can set up the side of my door. Maybe I'll do it here and I will get rid of these polygons and we don't need the floor all right so there we go all we need to do now is bridge these sections so i press and select on both edges and press f that troll face between both edges all right so that's the door actually looking at that that's probably a large door so i'm gonna I'm going to select my um, vertex, vertex fill here, vertex selection. I'm going to click on Y to go directly into orthographic and I want to turn on X-ray. X-ray will let me select objects through the mesh. Um, like you can see here, if I select this and I move this, I think I'm doing a great job. But if I look on the far side, it's not, it doesn't select through the mesh unless you have X-ray turned on. So if I come in, or undo that selection and turn on X-ray, and then I make that selection again. If I move that, it, it selects both sides. So you will be turning X-ray on and off quite a lot as well. And just to confirm it, X-ray is that like double square transparency. So I don't know what you'd even call that thing. Um, 
yeah, so what, what am I doing here? I want to make this top of the door it's a little too high, I think. So I'll select them and I'm going to drag it down a few segments. Maybe something like that. Up one or two. I'll go with that. I want, when I'm happy with that then, I will turn this back on. And I'll apply the mirror. Can't apply in edit mode, so I'll come out of edit mode back into object mode and apply. Alright, so there's the doorway. Now they're very, very simple, but we'll be adding to this. We'll be making like a wooden frame and air vents and all sorts of things further down the line but this is just to get a basic example of how this works and you can see because I'm snapping along the grid it'll snap seamlessly right beside that previous object that we made so I can then start duplicating this to my heart's content and that's the basis of how these modular objects are started The next logical part then would be to make a corner unit for, um, you know, just to kind of, we want to box off this and it's going to start off very, very simplistic until we kind of take these and turn them into more exciting pieces rather than just flat walls. You can get very ornamental looking things this uh, using this method as well. But for the moment, before we start getting really adventurous and then like, trying to find some reference about where we want to go, We'll just get this thing turned into a, a square room and we'll go from there. So a corner unit, you could have very basic corner unit like a corner segment wall here. So I'll just kind of copy this and drag it out and straight away I'll copy it again. And just by turning this fella here at uh, 90 degrees, um, we can kind of combine them then. Because again, it's snapping to the grid here, so if I pull that back, that's uh, that's as good as it's going to get in the corner, but we, we're left with um, this kind of notch taken out of it here. And we can close this up using uh, two ways. One, we can actually just use an, um, a tool called Shear, I believe it's called. Um, let me have a look here in edit mode. Where are we? I think it's this fellow here. Sure. Yeah, this is this is good at um turning. Let's say this is a, a straight edge, straight edge. We want to turn that to 90 degrees so we can get a runoff in. And I'll actually show you an example real quick. I don't want to ruin this because I'm going to use that, so I'll duplicate this out one more time. And I'm going to take this edge. Uh, we'll go into edit mode with it. And I'm going to take the shear tool, and if I just select the face here, I'm, I'm left with this gizmo. And this gizmo is going to let me rotate this object here, but keep the volume and the thickness. So, to explain what I mean by that, I'm going to first rotate this using the rotate tool. I'm going to turn this 45 degrees. So you can see in the top corner here, as I rotate that, the level of degrees okay so it's rotated to 45 but you can see the pinch that's happening as this rotates it pulls in the edges we don't want that to happen but like we wanted to keep a, um, a thickness like this and that's what the uh, that's what the shear tool is, is good for basically it'll give us that angle but it won't affect the volume of the thickness of this wall so I'll select the shear tool and I'll grab this little purple handle here and I'm just going to pull that out. And again, you can see the shear up in the top uh, top left corner. Bring that out until it uh, strikes at one. And we went a little over, but if we open up this uh, post tab here, we can fix that. So we just want this to be an offset of one. And there we go. Now we've got a perfect 45 degree angle here. So what we could do is we could do the same on this object, grab this and shear this one now to, this is going to be minus one because we're going the opposite direction. And that's our corner unit there. 
Um, I'm just going to move these aside. I don't need all them. Actually, I'm going to just remove them as well. Keep only what I need. And I'm going to put this guy, press Alt and G, and put him to world center. Now, that's one corner. But the problem with this is, because of the way its origin point is set up, let's say we wanted to turn this into a, a, a box, right? You could easily just duplicate, duplicate this. And then if I try to rotate this, it will rotate fine. I'm snapping it to 90 degrees, it'll rotate fine, but it's after moving a step over. So it's kind of a unnecessary hassle to come in and then fix all this and drag this back and forward. It will eventually meet up. But then if we want to do it again, there's an awful lot of extra changes that we have to do. So what we want to do is make this so that uh, no matter what way we turn this, it'll line up perfectly. And to do that, we just need to move the objects, the polygons, a step over without actually moving the origin point. And you can do that by um, selecting the object, going into up or edit mode select everything so press a and you'll notice that when i move this geometry it doesn't change the origin point i can pull it off to the side and the origin will stay where it is so i can then throw that around as i want and um, i don't want to do that much but i do want to pull that so that this origin point remember that's where it's going to rotate from this origin point has to be in the corner so with my um snap and turned on and I'm in object mode with my geometry selected. I'm just going to pull this one step to the left. And that then set up, this object will now rotate from this point. So when I come out of object mode, I can duplicate that. I will set it up here for now. Um, come on, we'll go another step. And from this point then, if I rotate this, it will line up perfectly and we can do the same control D to duplicate it and rotate that back into place yeah so we got a perfect square on that that's how the corner units work so I will keep this fella pull him to the side and delete these so that's the main starting building blocks for doing these kind of modular buildings. Once you have these three, you can create, you can start creating with that, and then you can add to it as you want. You know, let's say, uh, just a quick design. And all I'm doing is duplicating what I already made and using the grid to snap it. It can be very fast. But again, it's very boring. So we're gonna add a couple of things to it coming up and it's gonna start making it look a little more appealing rather than just flat walls. We can add uh, support beams to it. We can add wood panels, you know. You can even add like skirting going around the bottom or molding going around the top. We'll start working on windows and stuff now. 